noches, Lulac. Thank you for the great opportunity that you have afforded me tonight. My appreciation to Margaret Moran, LULAC National President, to our friends, past presidents Rosa Rosales, Hector Flores, Belen Robles, Rick Dovalina, to our honored speaker, Senator Orrin Hatch, to my Puerto Rican delegation, and to all the distinguished members of the National Board. It is an honor to be addressing the full membership of LULAC in this Presidential Awards Banquet. I've been participating in LULAC events since my teen years. The National Convention, in particular, has been a source of information and inspiration, a platform to meet new people, sharing a similar objective and a common vision, a vision of how we can improve the quality of life and the way forward for the Hispanic population in the United States. While I know that many of us have taken this noble quest in similar heartfelt fashion, my aim tonight is to offer you a different vision on a topic you all know much about and that LULAC has always supported. I am from Puerto Rico, the oldest and most populated colonial territory in the world. Recently, Puerto Rico has been the epicenter of much economic and fiscal turmoil that have some calling our island America's greed. And although our generation aims to right the ship, there is one glaring obstacle in our way to prosperity, and that is our political status. You see, the stars and stripes have proudly flown on our territory for the past 117 years. Yet the democratic value and the symbol of equality that the flag represents has not been fully functional in Puerto Rico. Band-aid policies for Puerto Rico won't work if we don't solve the root of the problem. We don't have full representation. We can't vote for our president or our vice presidents. These are clear violations of our civil and human rights. The colonial status has limited our potential for growth, our resources, our political status, our stability, and our vision forward. Yet in November 2012, that violation of civil rights became worse. It became a violation of voting and democratic rights. As the people of Puerto Rico voted against the colonial territory and voted in favor of statehood as the way to go forward in our political self-determination. To date, virtually no action has been taken at the local or federal level. But LULAC has always been supportive of the notion that the civil rights of Puerto Ricans are being violated under the current political status. And you have lent support on the basis of that moral injustice that this situation represents for more than 3.5 million Hispanics that reside on the island. However, tonight, I ask you to think about the issue of Puerto Rico's colonial status in a very different way. I'll ask you to think about the real opportunity it holds for all of us. I would like you to see the resolution of Puerto Rico's political woes as a path forward for the entire Hispanic community, all 50 million strong, not only those that reside in the island. Let's take a look at the great opportunity we all have at hand if the voice of Puerto Rican voters is finally heard. Imagine a state, what would be our state, one that is virtually 100% Hispanic. Imagine a state that could be the 27th most populous state in the nation and the fourth most populous Hispanic state in the nation. Imagine if we could have a state that would provide two senators and six House representatives to be stalwarts in the fight for all Hispanics in the United States. Imagine if we could have a state 
Let's imagine. Let's imagine. Imagine if we could have a state that would support all of the important efforts that LULAC has pushed forward in the past century. Imagine if we could have a state that could serve as a natural geographic and cultural connector to the rest of the Americas, providing the exchange of language, commerce, influence, ideas that define each and every one of us as Hispanics and Americans. Imagine if that state could be a center of higher education development, having many accredited universities that could provide a bilingual environment where future Hispanic scientists, doctors, engineers, and other professionals can start their careers and influence their respective fields in, their, in the U.S. and globally. Imagine if that state could be a center for top-rate scientific research, development, and innovation for the entire Western Hemisphere, if not the world. That vision is within our grasp. That state, our Hispanic state, can exist. It can exist because the people that live in it already cast their ballot to affirm that it wants to become that state. And because I believe that the Hispanic community of our nation can help reaffirm that will. Our 51st state would be a beacon to highlight and fight for Hispanic issues. With two senators, six House representatives, our 51st state will work together with the entire Hispanic community to advance educational and employment opportunities, fair treatment of immigrants, access to health care, and so many other issues that hit close to home in so many of our communities nationwide. With our 51st state under our belt, instead of working in silos with partition objectives, I envision a strong national community of Hispanics working together, not separately, on issues that concern all of us. If you share this vision, then let me tell you that you can make it happen. The power is in our hands. We can start by letting all our voices be heard and bring up the issue of Puerto Rico, not as an issue of a mile that's 1,500 miles away from the mainland, but bring it up as a national issue that affects us all. In every national meeting, in every national media interview and opportunity, in every visit to Congress and the White House, in every encount encounter with a candidate running for office, speak up about the crass violations of voting rights and democratic rights being committed against the 3.5 million American citizens of Hispanic origin that reside in Puerto Rico. Let's challenge all U.S. citizens to see if they support colonialism in the 21st century or if we will move forward towards a better America with our Hispanic state. Let them know that you represent a community that is 50 million strong and growing, and that our community will stand together on issues of national importance. We do this knowing that things move slowly in the Capitol. Congress tends to react and not act proactively. But many have faced this reality and have pushed forward aggressively towards a resolution. Our host, the great state of Utah faced seemingly unsurmountable obstacles in Congress when trying to become the 45th state of the union. For nearly 50 years, after drafting several different constitutions, they tried to convince Congress to reject religious discrimination, women's suffrage, and other issues that were keeping the original state of Deseret from becoming from being accepted into the union. Imagine then our level of frustration in Puerto Rico with our 117 year old struggle. Pero la lucha continúa. Y si se quiere, se puede. So our path forward towards attaining our Hispanic state will be a matter of creating that critical mass that will ignite the issue 
within the powers that be. It will depend on our capacity to get organized, to work together, and to work with each other. We already have the consent of the people of Puerto Rico. Now it's time for action. This is why, should no conclusive action be taken in the next 500 days, starting in 2017, we will do as seven other territories in the United States have done and evoke a Tennessee plan where we will elect two federal senators, six congressmen, to go to the Capitol and demand the validation of our Hispanic state. For this to work, we need to create a concerted effort from everyone who is willing to stand up for our community and for our rights. Puerto Rico's struggle is a powerful one, and I believe, no, I know it will serve as a foundation of a greater, stronger Hispanic community that will work together to solve our problems. And just like with any other matter, I know we all have our special motivations for supporting a particular issue or a, part or, or a particular cause. Tonight, I'll gladly share mine with you. You see, a few months ago, I became a father for the first time. And as all parents out there know, having a child opens up an entirely new perspective on life, just like my beautiful Claudia Beatriz did for me. Wanting a better future for Puerto Rico has gone beyond wanting a better tomorrow for my fellow Puerto Ricans. It has hit home, very close to my heart and that of my wife, Beatriz. The motivation is greater and clearer now because the goodness and prosperity that I've always wished upon my people, I now strive to provide for my very own family. It has become personal. It is more important than ever. I want to leave my daughter with a better Puerto Rico than the one that was left for us. I want to leave my daughter with a better America that once again remembers that this is a nation built on immigrants. I want her and all other Latino children to have an equal opportunity at a quality education so that they can maximize their potential. I want my Claudia and every daughter and son of every one of my compatriotas to live in an American island where democratic values are respected and where the voice of the voters is the law of the land. I want to leave Claudia and all the children of our beautiful island, a Hispanic state that can set the example before our American brethren that Latinos are an integral and essential part of the diverse fabric of our nation. So let's take ownership. So let's take ownership of Puerto Rico's request for statehood as a Hispanic national issue. It is in all our best interest to do so. Let's form a united front, gain greater national power to battle inequality and to provide opportunities for all our people. The great state of Puerto Rico will not only benefit those that reside in the island, it will be a state for all Hispanics in our nation. It will be our Hispanic state. Si se puede, muchas gracias y que Dios lo bendiga.